Hey guys, it's Betsy. Today I wanted to talk about the way that YouTube has kind of changed over the years for the worse and for the better. I've been watching a lot of Tiffany Ferguson on YouTube. She makes videos just like about like kind of commentary but more like on social and social media issues instead of just like watching a stupid video by the Dobre brothers and then making fun of it for viewers. She kind of digs deep and analyzes things and I've just been loving watching her and it's really made me think differently myself. So I kind of wanted to like try to make one of those videos. That's kind of where this is coming from. YouTube is definitely had a few changes over the years. I feel like anybody who's been on YouTube a while has noticed that. I mean, maybe not directly or super consciously, but as you look back, you can see that there have definitely been changes. And I hope I'm not the only one, but every so often I just get like nostalgic for the old YouTube. And I mean, that's not saying anything against what YouTube is now. Like it's relatable content. There's so much funny stuff going on. Like. I still love YouTube now, but just when things are from the past and you just have good memories of those, then like you just get nostalgic and like I miss it. It's really weird to notice all of the differences in the content being produced and like what used to be produced instead of now. So when I first made an account to subscribe to people, the first two people I subscribed to were Dan and Phil. They were the first YouTubers I ever watched, they were the first ones I ever saw, and I fell in love with them. And from there I was introduced to the whole Brit crew. We had Zoella, Casper, Alfie, Joe, Luis, and then from there we found Troy, Tyler Oakley, Connor Franta, Bethany Moda. Just like so many of the like OG YouTubers. So many of the videos that I remember watching, besides everything that Dan and Phil put out, were like Zoella's favorites videos, all of the challenges that they would do on like Tyler Oakley's channel, Troy's skits, and like all of these decorating my room videos, which I still tend to decorate my room because of just like the whole everybody decorating their rooms or their apartments or their houses for certain seasons or holidays. It's still something that's like stuck with me that I just like feel like I have to do now. But a lot of these types of videos I don't really see happening in the same fashion anymore. I don't really tend to see people making favorites videos. I don't see people making decorating my room videos. I'm sure they're out there, but they're not as like common and popular and in your recommended like they used to be. There's definitely still people doing skits. Like Danny Gonzalez has little skits in his videos. So does Drew Gooden. And like, I'm sure there are other people, not that I watch, but I'm sure there are others. And there are so many challenge videos, but they're just not, not the same. They're very different nowadays. I feel like a lot of YouTube at the moment is all about this like flexing culture, kind of showing how much money you have and all of your new stuff. Even the bigger influencers who aren't trying to flex, there's still a disconnect between the YouTuber and the viewer because if they are making a favorites videos. They're not as relatable anymore because you see them showing their favorites and it's like, oh cool, like I'm so glad that you have this Tatcha skin silk cream that works wonders for you, but it's like $300 and I can't afford that. So like, how does that help me? We see these people that are our age or around our age, slightly older maybe, and they're moving into their own apartment. They're moving into a huge house. They've got their Gucci. They're wearing Supreme all the time. And it's just, it just shows that we're not the same anymore. Watching Zoella or watching Dan and Phil with their videos, even if it wasn't stuff that maybe I do all the time, I still felt like they were a real person that like I would be friends with, you know? Like I felt them as my friends. And now with some of these people, like you don't feel like they're friend. You don't feel like you know them, nor do you feel like you can really connect with them because they're on such a different level. And the more that they try to show you all of their money, the more you feel disconnected. I also tend to feel like YouTube is a lot more consumeristic. Is that a real word? Right now, this kind of goes along with the whole flexing, unrelatable thing. There are so many YouTube videos that have like the title or it's in the thumbnail and it shows how much they spent. I spent this much money to do this for a day. I spent this much money shopping. I spent this much money, whatever. And it's like thousands of dollars. And it just makes me feel like who needs to do that? Like why, why did you even do that in the first place? I get that you're making money, that's great. But why do you need that many clothes? Why did you have to do that? In some cases it's entertaining. Like there was this one by Sierra Schultz. I didn't watch the video if I'm being honest. 
but like it seemed like okay that could be an entertaining interesting video so she basically did like being an LA person for a day and seeing how much they would typically spend which is interesting from a normal person point of view it's kind of like in Shane Dawson's new series with Jeffree Star Shane is the regular person and Jeffree is not and Jeffree kind of represents all of YouTube or not all of YouTube. Jeffrey kind of represents all of these bigger influencers right now. And yes, Shane is still a big influencer, but you still feel connected to him, even though he's making I am poor comments all the time. Like, yeah, we're poor too. We feel that. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, Gucci shoes, those are garbage. <laughs> How much were those? These, I, okay, can I be honest? Yeah. I don't know, I don't look. Or we have an option of one with with gold flakes in it, real gold. Go home. <laughs> Leave. I is it comes all the way from Paris, and this is one hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> right. We like his humor. We like his kinds of videos that he makes. And Jeffrey, we can like his content, but we don't feel like we're his friend. With Shane. It's a closer thing and I think Shane is really good at doing that because he's been on YouTube so long. He was part of like the original creators. And Jeffrey, yeah he's been here for a while, but he has so much money. So there's this disconnect, if that makes sense. So back to the whole spending money, clothing, hauls thing. I feel like with all of these videos being put out and mostly shown to a younger generation, like I feel like 20 somethings, 30 somethings, people who have actual jobs making a living for themselves aren't necessarily watching all of these haul videos and seeing all of these kind of teenage YouTubers who are doing really well for themselves spending all of this money. Instead it's being targeted, to, I don't want to say targeted, it's falling into the laps of like 13 to maybe 17 year olds. Maybe they have a job, maybe they don't. So they think all of this shopping stuff is normal. So they are asking their parents or maybe they're just spending all of their own money on shopping because they're like, oh, somebody I connect with, somebody who is my friend is doing all of this. So this must be normal. When it's not, it's not normal to spend that much money. It's not normal to go shopping all the time. When I was younger, I got like one big haul of clothes every year and it was around back to school time because you get new clothes before you go back to school. That was how it worked for my family. So it's not normal to every month you get a whole new wardrobe basically. Personally, I'm not blaming YouTubers for my money troubles. Just want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not blaming these people for my awful spending habits. But seeing all of this definitely skewed my perception for a while. I mean, I had my own job, so I was spending my own money, but I was definitely buying and spending more money than I needed to. I didn't need to keep buying clothes from Romway. I didn't need to keep buying clothes from Forever 21. I didn't need to go shopping all the time or buy stuff from Wish. Like, it was just not necessary. And thinking about how much money I could have now if I didn't do that all the time is a little, like, puts a pit in my stomach. So I'm like, wow, I could be doing really well off right now and I'm just not. And like so many of my first videos were haul videos because I thought that's what I kind of had to do to be relevant because that's what all of these other bigger influencers were doing. And I kind of thought it was a normal thing for people to shop all the time when it's, it's not. Bigger influencers may have to, and I'm saying this very, very loosely, buy more things because their job requires it. They're being judged more harshly on their image, the way that they are being shown to the world. So that's clothing, makeup, the way that their Instagram pictures look, the way that they look in their YouTube videos. It makes sense that they need more things because they may be judged if they don't look their best all the time. And to look their best, you're not supposed to repeat outfits, you're not supposed to repeat makeup looks. I mean, they go to events all the time, so they need new clothes for that because you can't repeat an event outfit where you had all of these pictures taken. You can't do that again at another event. So in a way, like it kind of makes sense that they're buying clothes all the time, but I also feel like some of it is very misleading. So Haley Pham has been in a lot of YouTube drama recently, but I think she's a really great example of this kind of YouTube culture. She is in the YouTube culture right now. She's a big influencer, big YouTuber. She's got over a million subscribers. She's doing well. But also, she still mostly feels like one of us. She's my age. I think she's actually a little bit younger than me, but we won't go there. It's just like by a few months, so it's fine. I won't feel super bad about myself. But she's in the middle of this right now and she talks about it, but she still is trying to be 
what she thinks YouTube is, which is this like whole game of money. I've heard her say in a few different hauls that she was going to return the clothes after she showed them to the viewer, which doesn't make sense. Cause if you're doing a haul, I want to see the haul with the things that you got, the things that you want to wear. So then maybe like I get ideas for what I want to wear, not just so that you can like make a YouTube video and then return it. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I really would, I really would not have done this unless this was my only option for a video this Fan Friday. So I forced myself to go to all these places and spend money that I really didn't want to spend just for the purposes of this. I have been having a struggle with Ailey, I kid you not. Just for the purpose of this video. So odds are I might even return all of this stuff because I can't believe how much money was taken out of my bank account for this video. What's the point of that? And don't get me wrong, I love watching hauls but like i want to see what you like and what you're buying for yourself but then there's this flip side where i really like youtube now because i feel like in some cases we can be more connected to the youtubers we watch there's so many different ways to connect with each other over social media and it can still be just as personal a relationship as it used to be if not even more in the olden days of youtube i feel like we were very about perfect polished people. Zoella, Bethany Moda, and Nikki and Gabby, all of their videos were very masked. Like they were wearing a mask of this perfect person and not like they were a real person. As a younger teen, I don't think this necessarily matters as much or at least it didn't used to. We like seeing this perfect kind of person. But now I feel like we kind of get turned off of that, which is why this trend of relatable YouTubers came out. Because now that there's this relatable YouTuber, we're seeing how other people just like us actually live it's not like oh we do something that they don't do we shouldn't do that it's more like yeah just accept who you are you're an average person just like me i feel like emma chamberlain is a great example of this because she's definitely not a perfect youtuber she burps on camera she films on the toilet she films with acne cream on she showed us the awful side of coachella that's far from perfect which has kind of been hidden from us for so long. Everybody always hyped it up as this amazing festival and she was like, coffee is $15 and I got no sleep and now I'm dying. I'm fascinated by watching the imperfect because we feel like it's way more relatable and real instead of watching this perfect friend group interact with each other. Like Trisha Paytas is constantly having breakdowns on her channel and we're just like, huh. Girl, same. We definitely relate more to YouTubers now than maybe we ever have. And this isn't to say all YouTubers because there's still definitely people who are crazy, but then there's also people who are way more like us. So just like anything in the past, the old times always seemed simpler and better. I mean, especially with YouTube, it definitely seemed a little bit simpler, more carefree, less focused on money. And honestly, sometimes they miss that. I mean, I tend to get pretty nostalgic for the past, even when it wasn't necessarily good. I just focus on like the positives and I block out the bad. So if you feel the same way, let me know. That's kind of my thoughts on the subject. If you guys want to share your thoughts down below, I would love to hear what you think about the difference between YouTube then and YouTube now. And let's have a discussion. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.